going to start by talking about the bridging plate sets. This is the card for the Altair one. Okay. This is a really cool thing. Some people call it hem stitching. Some people call it Spanish hem stitching. But it's a really cool technique that I'm going to show you tonight. So, and up in the description of this video are the item numbers. But I'm going to post them here in the chat. Hold on. Paste. Because there's, a, there's this one for the Altair, Destiny, uh, Crescendo, Chorus, those lines of machines. But the Solaris has a, has a different one because these fit over the bobbin cover of our sewing machines. So for, if you have a Solaris, make sure you get the correct one. All the other machines will take the BLDYFP. Only the Solaris will take the BLSAFP, okay? So I have it set up for the Solaris tonight. I finally got this one in so we can play with it and we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna swap, swap my camera over if I can talk. There's my mouse, there's my mouse, and we're gonna get started. I have the J foot on, although the machine is just the J foot. And this is what they look like, everybody. They're actually, they replaced the bobbin cover. The spacing between this one here is five millimeters. Let's see if we can hold that up where you can see that. It's got a, like a little channel right there. See that, there we go. So there's a five millimeter, and a two and a half millimeter. And what we do is we just pop our bobbin cover off right there. And I'm gonna put the five millimeter one in. Come on you. There we go. And you do not want the J foot on. <laughs> We want the open-toed foot, I believe. Because this is kind of like an embroidery technique. Let me come over here to my treasure box and get a different foot out. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Nope, it is in my kit bag, my foot bag. I thought I had the right foot out, but I didn't. So, what I want is an open toed foot for this machine. And I know there's one in here because I remember just putting it back up. If you, that's why it's not out. I was cleaning and straightening up in here. Okay. There we go. The open-toed foot will work, and it's a clear plastic foot right here. Let me get that card out. E-S-G-O-T, open-toed foot. Another foot that really works great with it is the chenille candle wicking foot. Not chenille, the candle wicking foot. It's metal. It could also be used for, like, just like the open-toed foot for applique. See there? It has a wider space in between there than what this one has. Either one of those feet will work perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to put the, the open-toed foot on it. And why you have to have that is because that flange from the bridging plate fits right in between, right in between the legs of this. So those, the two parts of the foot that stick out towards you, <clears throat> that bridging plate fits in here, right here like so. See? Okay. So I have it threaded. And what you do with this foot, <clears throat> this bridging plate, you take two pieces of fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to bend my camera over so you can see how I've got this lined up. There we go. 
So see, there's, there's the five millimeter gap. And what you do, you place two pieces right up against that, and it creates a five millimeter gap in between the fabric. And I'm gonna join those two fabrics together, but it'll, it'll leave like this lacy network of thread in between them. And you'll see here in just a second. So where I'm at, I'm in stitch group number three, and you want a stitch that'll do like, it'll do at least one stitch on each side at its widest point. I am going to put this up to seven millimeter width since this is the five millimeter gap. But for instance, 310, that one would work really well with it. That's the one I'm going to use. Also 320, 325. If I go back to number two, <clears throat> 215 would work really well. 213 would work. So what it has, it has to come over and make a stitch on each side of that. So that's what'll, what will actually tie all that together. So I'm gonna go back over here to my number three and my 310. And we'll see what that one looks like. Okay, you move that camera over. I'm just gonna put my pieces of fabric and I'm going to do my best that they start off evenly. And I'm going to lower the presser foot. I'm going to give it a little gas. I'm going to get them under the needle, though. I want that needle to start on the fabric. There we go. And we'll give that one a shot. And we'll see what happens. So I can see right now I'm not hitting it just right. It's because I'm sitting off to the side here. Let me just cut that. Okay. And we'll just do that on the other side. Okay. There we go. You gotta kind of push them into each each piece of that fabric. You wanna push it towards that little center plate. And I'm just doing a single layer of fabric. Normally the edges of this, and that's why it's wanting to do what it's trying to do here. You want it, it should be going through two thicknesses of fabric on each side, but it's gonna do it. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm holding it together so it kind of channels in. And it's it's doing what it's supposed to, yay. But the next one we're going to actually fold. I wanted you to see what it would do with the fabric, just a single thickness and raw edges. It kind of wants to bring it up on top of each other, which could have its own cool effect as far as that goes. However, this is not true Spanish hem stitching. But check it out. There's what it did. Okay. True, spa true hem, um, Spanish hem stitching with this, you'll see right through it. There'll be no fabric underneath. So this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these two pieces of fabric and I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to put the folded edges through this time. See what I'm doing there? I'm just going to fold it and finger press it. There's one. We'll do another one. <clears throat> there we go. Now I'm going to put the folded edges towards the center. Now I'll give it a, a lot more stability. Okay, here we go.
<laughs> but you can see up here at the top, see right there? See how you can see through that? There's my finger in behind it. But that's what Spanish hem stitching is. It's a really cool technique. Now then, let me see what happened to my thread breakage here. Did my needle just come undone? Okay. Now we're going to put in that two and a half millimeter plate. So there's that. We'll put in the smaller one. There we go. And then we're going to get us two more pieces of fabric. And when I get done with this demo, I'll come back and answer any questions. Just finger pressing. There we go. That's what it likes, everybody. It likes that extra little fabric bump there. It's still not forming a stitch, though. What did I do? Hold on here. Oh, come on, you. There we go. There we go. Did I bust a needle? Let me see something. No. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Let's give it another go here. I bet my I bet I dulled a needle. I did. Let me put a new needle in. There we go. Let's get another needle in there, and I think it'll do a little bit better. No wonder I was having problems. You just never know until you get started what these things will do. Okay. So I'll just get out a nice new needle. Okay. And what I'm putting in is a size 80 universal. I'll get in there, you. There we go. Let's get a little nudge there. There we go. I am all thumbs tonight. Here we go. Let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. Now we'll give it another shot. Now that's on there. Let's get that presser foot back on. There we go. Okay. Did that get threaded or not, though? Okay, let's do it. Let's get you threaded again there, Miss Solaris. I see what the issue is. There we go. Yep, that threaded that time. Just going to cut those, snip that apart real quick.
There we go. Okay. Now. Still not forming a proper stitch. What have I not done correctly? Let's try you there again. I'm going to put in my regular plate and I'm going to do a straight stitch. There we go. forming a proper stitch okay so I don't it's not that I don't have it threaded correctly <laughs> that's what I was checking okay but anyway you get the idea that's what it does it leaves a gap in between the two finished edges you can see that gap right there with the thread through it we're going to give it one more shot so I'm going to try a different stitch this time. I'm going to use, I am going to use, <clears throat> let me see here. I think what the problem may have been. I had it in the decorative mode instead of a utility mode. So we're going to try that one there. That is stitch number 2-09 that we're going to try next. Let me get that um, bridging plate back in. Okay. And success that time. Thank goodness. <laughs> but you can see that right there now. See that? If, you, if I hold that apart, you can see them back there on the back as well. So it's a really fun tool to play with. 